For people who have questions, just raise your hand and uh, someone will come with uh, a microphone. <coughs> Um, my question is, what kind of activism do you think is best in this situation? Um, according to Mr. Bryson's letter here, we have a choice tomorrow of whether or not to publicly picket his decisions and the canadian Colombian Free Trade Agreement, or to come and ask him questions and to challenge his issues. So I would just have to ask, what do you think is better, public protest or private confrontation? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll just uh, speak as a parliamentarian. The most effective voices that you can have are not voices that go to your MP, if you've already done that, and I know many people have spoken to him, spoken to him privately about this agreement, that the most effective voices you can have is when you write to the local newspaper. When you send a letter to him, but you co copy Michael Ignatieff, and you copy other liberal members of parliament, and send a copy to me too, so I'm aware of it. And, and what that means is people are seeing that in, in Wellfield, in King's Hands, there are many people opposed to this agreement. Because that's uh, what, what an MP will try to do is minimize your opposition. He will try to privatize it so that it's not public. He wants to he'll have you in a room and he'll privatize that and then he'll say, he'll go to Ottawa and he'll say, oh, nobody's concerned about that agreement. Nobody's concerned or I've had a few meetings, but it's not a real problem. But if you're writing to the weekly newspaper every week, somebody different is writing in. If what you're doing is, is uh, talking on the radio, if you are sending letters that are public because you're also copying a whole variety of people, and I think on this sheet you've got a whole number of email addresses, then it's no longer a private conversation. It is a public chastising, and that's how you get public political change, is when you're very public and stand up. And remember, in Colombia, people don't have that option. If they stand up publicly, they, in many cases, will be threatened. In some cases, they will die. So we have to give voice to Colombians that don't have that option. Angela, would you just clarify the time for the rally? Yes. Sorry, the, the rally is actually at 12 o'clock, uh, and the invitation, I believe, is 12.30, right? So, so you could conceivably do both, but uh, we definitely would love to, to have you come to the rally. And perhaps, perhaps we can decide at the rally uh, if we want to proceed here. Or, or a few uh, of us may, may want to come down with that. Uh, Jim, Jim and I were uh, in a village in, in Colombia, and uh, a para organization came through, and we were able to identify them as uh, one of the, the meanest ones, one that brags about putting little kids' heads on the top of their bayonets after they sliced them. Um, and they came into the village and gave uh, each person in the village uh, a, a small note in very, very simple Spanish saying, you will vote for a rebate. A small piece of paper. And they actually gave Jim and I a copy of this. Their boss saw this and began, uh, well, uh, searching and, and uh, well, um, uh, uh, putting us down. And, of course, well, who were we? Well, we were not researchers, which is in fact what we were. Of course, we became stupid Canadians who were around looking at the scenery and so on. And we mentioned, we mentioned that um, uh, uh, we lived right near a big, great big military base, and so we were good people. And they went, Canadians, <laughs> because Canada had, had uh, refused to go to, uh, to Iraq, basically. That was on that, that was their basis. So um, I guess I really want to pick up on this seven bases that, in fact, Obama has, has uh, 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 agreed that the U.S. is going to take over in the United States. Because, because those those bases already know in Venezuela and around there is a pact to, to, to beat them. Those bases are seen as an assault on Venezuela and as a prop to this killer regime in, in Colombia. And you know, 
I think of this free trade agreement as Canada taking over, so teaching the Paris no longer to spit at us. Because Canada is going to have the cojones, the balls, if you will. Canada is going to have the balls to have the first free trade agreement with this killer, killer regime first. And then, in order to protect it even, a contingent of Canadians are going to go. And I, I think this is, I think that's very possible. That, that in this particular situ situ situation, we may have another war brewing too. So there are 10 and there are 20 reasons, and maybe this one is just me being paranoid, but I think that this is not just about free trade, again, as Paul said. I think this is about training a bunch of people. Listen to Scott Bryson in terms of what he thinks Chavez is. Scott Bryson, the phone comes out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, it's a point I want to make that, 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 that uh, uh, when you hear him anytime telling you you're supporting democracy, remember that little story about that village, please? Because there's only 100 people voting in that village, folks, and if they don't get 100% return, that village will be wiped out. They will be disappeared. Those people will be disappeared. And every one of them knew that that's what was the message. Excuse me. Uh, we've actually experienced people follow 